Okay, I wanted to uh, show you a, an aerial photograph of, uh, of the Texas City plant. This was, uh, this was taken from a satellite, actually, in um, about six months before the accident occurred. And so what, what you can see over here in the refinery is a, a raffinate uh, splitter column. Now this is basically separating um, um, lightweight, uh, air, uh, lightweight um, alkanes from, uh, from the refining process. Um, and uh, of course, the, it's a complicated process, but the, the, the key other piece of equipment that I want to point out is um, the blowdown stack that uh, takes uh, any liquid from, that would uh, relieve any liquid from the vent of the raffinate splitter column. I also want to point out uh, a building here, which is a um, basically it's a plain steel building that uh, used to hold, house the uh, control room for the plant for this raffinate splitter unit, um, and it was at that point it had just been uh, idled and replaced with a with a more robust building, a blast resistant building, down in this part of the plant. And then th this area here is, in the photo is empty, but uh, over the next few months. Um, British Petroleum, which is the owner of this plant, um, in installed 13 um, temporary trailers. So these were uh, structures that they brought in by truck and, and uh, placed on the site, and they were used to house uh, a crew of workers that were working on uh, a, 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 re a rebuild in uh, the raffinate splitter area, and also in this adjacent area down here, which was the fluid cat cracker area. So the, the trailers were installed here. This is a, a, a ground level view of the raffinate splitter column. Okay. And then this is the, the blowdown stack. The other thing I wanted to highlight in this picture is, uh, is a number of trucks that are on the ground. And uh, in, I don't know about, uh, chem about refineries or chemical plants in India, but in, in the state of Texas, it's very common for there to be uh, pickup trucks uh, that are that are driving all up and down the roads of the plant, and uh, of course in this case there are there are many trucks in in this area. Now what happened was on the on the evening before on the on the uh, evening of March 22nd, um, the uh, the evening shift decided to begin the startup of the raffinate splitter column, which is part of the overall startup of the uh, of the plant. Now the adjacent cracker unit was still not started and probably wouldn't wouldn't start for for some time, uh, but uh, you know they, they had other parts of the plant that they that they had to operate and, and catch up. So the, uh, the, the 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 column was started by the evening shift operator beginning to feed the the regular the regular raw material feed into this column, and uh, the operator did did so. Uh, the, of course, the first thing that he needs to do is to fill up the uh, the bottom of the column. But what he neglected to do was to put the, uh, the, open the bottom valve from the column. And, and normally uh, what you really want to do is put the, the bottom, open the, the manual bottom valve and put the, put the, uh, the level of the, of the bottom of the column on, on automatic control. He did not do that and began to feed liquid to the column. And so the liquid accumulated in the bottom and, 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 and rose higher and higher in the column. And, uh, and then the, uh, the morning came and, and the, next, the next shift arrived. Um, and uh, they, they uh, you know, said hello and, uh, and goodbye. And the new shift came on. So they did not discuss uh, at, the, at, the, at the change of shift what was actually happening in the plant other than they had just started up the, the, the column. So the new operator uh, arrived and, 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 and uh, saw that feed was coming in. And, and simply watched it rise in the column. And the, the liquid had continued to rise higher and higher in the column um, to, to actually a fairly good height without the operator, the second operator, knowing that, uh, that it was actually uh, accumulating. And of course, the next you know, step of the, of the process is to start heating uh, the bottom. So they fired up the reboiler and started heating the bottom of this column. So this is the, the, the reboiler area down here. So the, um, the, the bottom of the column started to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And of course, as the liquid is now you know, halfway up the column, there's a great deal of pressure 
uh, above the, the reboiler. And so now it is possible to uh, heat the contents in the, in the reboiler well above the normal boiling point for, the, for, that, uh, for that liquid. So um, that, that continued for a while. And then all of a sudden, the, the day operator looked at the control panel and saw that the level was at 80%. And it's supposed to be at 70%. And he said, oh, well, I must have forgotten to open the bottom valve. And so at that point, he, he opened the bottom valve. And when that happened, the, the liquid flowed out of the bottom of the column to, uh, to, the next, to, the, to the receiving tank through the feed bottom heat exchanger. And so now we have superheated bottoms, heat exchanging with cold, the cold feed, and the, the feed then started to boil. And so the feed entered the middle of the column, and now there's a, there's a liquid level above the feed. So now there's, a, there's a, a gaseous feed entering at a very high rate into the middle of the column, and that, uh, that big mass of, of gas just propelled the liquid up out of the top of the column and down uh, through the, uh, the downcomer and out through the condenser and all the way down to the, uh, the vent stack. And, and in a matter of a few minutes, the, uh, the base of, the, of the, the vent stack filled with liquid and then the, 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 the vent stack continued to fill with liquid and then pretty soon liquid was spraying out at the top of the vent stack. Now you can imagine that liquid spraying out of, a, of the top of a vent stack is not a good thing. And um, there, were, there was a, a new operator that looked over uh, at the vent stack and saw that that liquid was, was coming out of the vent stack and came back to the control room and, 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 and announced uh, this. He said, you must, you know, you must pull the, the emergency uh, alarm and call, you know, call for evacuation. But the, but the head operator said, no, that, it, that, that can't possibly be happening. Meanwhile, there are trucks that are driving up and down the street. And uh, one truck was, was seen to be, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, the engine began to race because it was getting now a much more rich fuel mixture into its carburetor. And uh, the, of course, it got, the, the engine got extremely hot and, uh, and that, that caused a flash fire. So the liquid flashed back to the, the vent stack and then exploded. This is some of the damage that, uh, that occurred. This is actually the base now of the raffinate splitter column, which, uh, as, you, as you saw from the aerial picture, was really quite a distance away from the, uh, from, from the, the, uh, the uh, vent stack. Um, so the, you know, the damage traveled quite a distance. And if it traveled that distance across the plant, you can imagine, here's, a, here's another view. This is a, a pipe bridge that was, uh, that was destroyed yeah, turn into a turn into a twisted metal. This is the inside of that uh, that that former control room building. It had had not been emptied yet. The uh, the walls didn't didn't cave in, but because of the pressure to generate from the uh, explosion, they flexed. And when they did, everything that was sitting against the wall was was bumped into the the middle of the room. And this is a trailer that uh, contained. Uh, 12 workers from Jacobs Engineering, which was uh, doing the, uh, the, the turnaround in the, in the CAC Cracker unit. And uh, these, these 12, uh, the 12 workers that were in this trailer were, were killed instantly. And as you can see, this is re reduced to, to uh, ash and, uh, and rubble. The, uh, the, the principle of, of level control in, in this column is actually a pretty simple one. It's very, been, been commonly used for many, many years. Uh, it's used by uh, differential pressure. And uh, the, uh, you know, the equation is very simple. You know, it's the density times the height of the liquid plus the density of the height of the gas. But of course, that's negligible. And so you're really measuring, when, when the liquid is between the, the sensors, you're reading the, uh, the, lo the, the height of the interface. However, when the liquid goes above the sensor, you're no longer reading the height of the liquid. What you're reading instead is the density of the liquid. And as you begin to heat the, as the, as the column got, the bottom of the column got hotter and hotter, the density dropped lower and lower. And so the, the level, which was reading 100%, now started to, to drop and was, had reached 80%. And in fact, if the, if the operator had waited 
another, uh, another, another interval of time, he might actually have seen that the, that the level of the column looked normal. And that could have been even worse. Okay, there are many things that can be learned from, from, this, uh, from this accident. And uh, this, is, this is just one page. Um, the, uh, the official incident investigation report is almost 1,000 pages, um, including, I think, uh, 200 pages of explanation and 800 pages of, of tables and graphs and figures. It's uh, really uh, very good reading uh, that, that I, I recommend to, to anybody who is, is studying chemical engineering. Um, it may take a while, but it's, but it's definitely worth, uh, worth reading. First of all, if the operator was following the, the basic written procedure, um, the, uh, th this accident would not have occurred because the very first thing that he would have done is open the bottom valve and put the level control on automatic. Um, and so the learning for you, know, for, for you is that it's not enough to just assume that the operator uh, knows, the, you know, knows what he's doing, but also that a procedure is written and it's written well and that uh, it's followed, and that's, uh, that's very important. The, uh, the second thing was that the first operator didn't really notify the, the, the second operator what the status was in the plant. And uh, you know, typically what you should, sh you should do, the, the two operators should do, is sit down and say, okay, I have done this, and I have done this, and I have done this. And I have not done this, and I have not done this. So your next step is the following. And, uh, and you know, just the, just the act of having that discussion, you know, would probably have brought up the fact that that bottom valve wasn't wasn't open. Now, the the basic knowledge, this is something you know, the, the the operation of a level indicator. It's something that's taught to operators as part of their their basic training. Um, and uh, in fact, it's even taught to to engineers when they go to a plant for the first time because it's not unusual to forget. This uh, you know you learn this in school, but you can forget it too. And uh, I know that my first time that I, I worked on a distillation column, a very a very senior uh, person came to me and sat me down and, and said, "Make sure you know this. This is something that's very important." The uh, as it turns out, the the supervisor for uh, for the day shift uh, was called on a family emergency, and uh, he, he assumed that uh, that everything was well in hand, and he. He, he left the plant for an hour just to make sure that everything was well, but the, with his, with, I think it was with his family. Unfortunately, he left during the hour that, uh, that this, this accident occurred, and if he was paying attention, um, you know, he, he, should have known, he should have known better. In fact, all you really needed to do was to look at the trend on the, on the DCS, and had they, had they done that, they would have seen the level was dropping from 100% to 80%, and would have asked why, and it should have been that at that point become very obvious, especially to a supervisor. Of course, the emergency evacuation alarm was not sounded. There were trucks driving in the process area, and in fact, uh, it's uh, against uh, the safety procedures of the plant and of almost every plant for um, tr for for vehicles to be driving, especially during a, uh, a startup, because during the startup, uh, it's it's that's where you discover where. Um, you know, equipment may not be connected properly. There may be leaks. It's a, a very good reason to uh, to not drive a vehicle, and so the truck should not have been on the road at that time. Now, management of change. This is a very important um, important uh, thing uh, to know um, as far as uh, operating a chemical plant because it's it's our nature. It's as engineers, we want to make things better. And uh, if we see that uh, there's a need to, to, to do either accomplish a task or make something more efficient, we want to make that change as fast as we can. Unfortunately, sometimes if we don't think very carefully about the nature of those changes, something bad can happen. And uh, in this case, there was a very simple management of change, which was the, the, imp the installation of temporary trailers in an area where there was going to be a, start, a started up process unit. And, and again, temporary trailers are not designed to withstand explosions. And so they made the decision to install these trailers without considering the possibility that there could be an explosion during startup. And that was a, a very important thing to, to, to consider. And, but you know, this is not really a, a, a process type of change, but uh, you know, even if, if you were going to change 
let's say, feed rates or um, location of the feed in the column, you know, the uh, distillation parameters, all these things are changes that have to be managed. Okay, um, siting guidance. The, uh, this is actually, this, this speaks to an industry standards for um, the distance that you need to keep between operating units and different kinds of buildings, uh, occupied buildings. So if you have a, 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 a building that's occupied, it has to be able to w withstand an explosion. And the, and the building that, was, that I showed you that was located uh, below the unit, that was uh, you know, the, the, that new reinforced control room, indeed uh, survived the, the blast. Um, on the other hand, uh, the trailers, which were not designed to be occupied, um, were not able to withstand the blast. And they should have been located uh, a considerable distance away. Now, if you had followed the, the guidelines that exist, the American Petroleum Institute recommended practice 752, and uh, the vapor cloud explosion guideline of, of CCPS, um, the, those trailers um, were, were, were not sighted, they were still sighted too close. But had you followed these guidelines and, cite, you know, and cited them, they would have been able to withstand the flash fire, but not the explosion. And so, um, in fact, they're, they're not conservative enough and, and we have to go back and, and make some revisions and, and actually extend uh, those distances. Another very important thing that you need to do um, when, with the start of any new piece of process equipment is a pre-startup safety review, which is to make sure that, that uh, everything that needs to be in place is in the proper place. And one of the very first things that you would do in a pre-startup safety review is ask the question, is the bottom valve open? Okay, and so you know that would be the kind of thing that, uh, that would need to be done. But in, in addition, it looks for uh, you're inspecting to make sure that, let's say, lined, uh, line blinds, line um, blanks were removed, or that uh, instrument connections were reconnected, um, or um, you know, you know, basic basic piping what modifications were complete, and all these things had to be done, but they were not done. Okay, now let's let's go to the management level. Okay, these these are all these people all uh, you know. Uh, we're in the, in the business world and they got there through being a chemical engineer. Um, and they believed that BP had a very good safety program. And in fact, they're right. BP had a very good safety program. But they, made, they, they became confused. Um, what, they, what, they, what they were confused is they looked at the rate at which employees were getting injured, the occupational injury rate. And that was getting very, very low, and in fact was one of the lowest in industries. In industry. So they, they came to the conclusion that, that not only is the occupational uh, safety program of BP good, but also that the process safety program is good. There's two different things. One deals with people, and the other deals with the engineering, the safe engineering of equipment. The hardware and the software. And, uh, and in fact, the process safety program, especially at this, at this plant, was, was not, uh, not as good as it could be, even though this plant had an excellent occupational safety record. And so the, 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 the leadership of BP did not come into the plant to do inspections. They said the plant is obviously doing very good. Um, and so, um, you know, they, they, uh, they ignored uh, the, all of these conditions, which had they done a proper inspection, would have, have discovered. They would have discovered that the culture for process safety was nowhere near as strong as the culture for, for safety. So people were very, you know, they would wear their seat belts when they drove the trucks, but they, even though they should not have been driving the trucks in the first place. So that gives you an idea of the, of the two different kinds of cultures. And there are many, there, uh, there are many more, uh, much more to learn. This is how you can uh, receive, read the information that BP presents on, on this accident. It's uh, bpresponse.com. And it can be downloaded and, and, uh, and, and read at your, at your convenience. There's uh, additional information that will be coming out over the, over the next uh, few months. A very high level panel called the Baker Panel was convened uh, last year. And uh, their report is due, uh, in fact, it may have been released uh, today. It's, it's sometime this week or possibly next week. Also, the, the U.S. Chemical Safety 
a board will uh, issue a report in, in March of, of 2007. This is uh, an, an accident investigation board of, of, the, of the United States. Um, and they will have many recommendations for, uh, not just for BP, but also for industry in general. And so we look forward to seeing, uh, seeing their recommendations. And uh, finally, we'll do a comprehensive review of, uh, of all of the recommendations to industry by, by all of the appropriate panels uh, at the CCPS conference, which is in April of, of next year.